Asami, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank hey, you for uh, having me. <laughs> Great to be here. Yeah, Glad yeah to we're have really, you. really excited. It's we have a twelve-hour time difference, so uh, <laughs> it's. Uh, I'm happy that we could uh, work this out. Cool. <laughs> Well, uh, let's start off with a little bit of your your background. Now, you actually there's this wonderful video on the business or the the organization's website, B1G1, um, and it, it gives. I, I just highly encourage all the listeners to go watch that. It, it gives your your story, uh, which is very inspiring. But let's go ahead and uh, give a few details for for the listeners. For you know, you you came out of your you're from Japan. You were quiet. You were shy when you were younger, and now you are. You have an international nonprofit. You work with businesses all over the world and do speaking engagements everywhere. That's that's incredible. How how did you get there? Okay. Um, before I talk about the getting here, but I just wanted to give a just a context of what we do. So B1J1 is the organization I run and founded and run. And um, the idea of B1J1 came from the concept of, you know, buy one, give one idea. So uh, just simply, you know, if you imagine a world where everything you do makes a difference, such as every time you have a cup of coffee, a child receives access to life-saving water. Or every time you read a great book, then a tree gets planted. Or every time you go to see a you know, doctor, then somebody else also receives much needed health care. So if you imagine you know, all the things you do in your life, and if everything also resulted in great global impact around the world, then you can see that we perhaps can together you know, um, solve all the problems that we see in the world. So that's B1J1. And the background <laughs> is that, um, yes, like as you said, I was a shy little girl in Japan growing up. And, you know, eventually out of curiosity, I started to travel around the world um, because I just wanted to see what was happening, even though I was really scared of, you know, the unknown. And I couldn't even speak English at that time. <laughs> so this young back. Packer um, uh, started to meet and connect with many different people. And through the very, very simple interaction of not even having the language to communicate with people, I started to really like enjoy the real connection, you know, simple connection that I could form just by being open and, uh, you know, vulnerable. And everywhere uh, I went around the world, there were always people who were kind and, you know, uh, always willing to help me. So I was very moved by that experience in my you know, younger age. And then but at the same time, around that time, I started to see so many things in the world that I couldn't understand, you know, such as why is it that some young children are not even going to school and working uh, on the field or begging on the street. And I just didn't know why we were not doing <laughs> something about these things that wouldn't be happening in my own community or country. So uh, I had this dilemma, but at the same time, I was this little person, so I didn't have the power to change the world. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I was just going to enjoy this interaction. And so I went on. But then um, a few years later, I accidentally became a mom. And I was living in New Zealand at that time. And then having this like vulnerable young baby in my arms, I suddenly realized that I had to do something. You know, even though I couldn't help everybody or change the world, but I had to do something because if my child, my, my daughter was in the same place, you know, happened to be born as an orphan, then if nobody helped, and because they all said, oh, I can't change the world, <laughs> then that's not like I couldn't, couldn't accept that reality. So I thought I would do something and uh, do something beyond just uh, taking care of my own family. So that was when I be decided to become an entrepreneur and I started my very first business, which was a food business because I was passionate about food and I wanted my company to provide a healthy eating option to busy families and come together and enjoy those meals. But at the same time, I wanted to give the profit of the company away to help feed and educate um, children like street kids. Or So 
Um, uh, but then what happened was about five years on running this company and slowly developing, gradually developing this business, you know, um, with all the hard work. Um, one day I realized that we actually weren't doing anything because we were too busy and we didn't have a lot of money to give or such. So I always said to myself, like, we weren't ready. <laughs> and then one day when we become more successful, then we will be able to, you know, for example, build a soup kitchen or create our own foundation or something. And, but then it felt like as I moved on, you know, moved forward, then my goal was moving forward ahead of me and I could never reach there. <laughs> so then one day this simple idea came to me and I thought, what if instead of trying to do something big in the future, you know, we did every, something every day, but just a little thing. And we decided to embed that, you know, um, uh, giving in our everyday activity. And so for our food company, it was that every time we sold a packet, package of frozen meal that we were supplying to health food stores and supermarket, we would just give a small portion of the proceed to give a meal, help give a meal to a child so that they could come to school and enjoy that meal. So that was the beginning of B1J1. And then about seven months later, after we started to do that, uh, there was another realization for me. And then I thought, oh my gosh, but actually the world is full of businesses and the people who started those businesses with you know, purpose and mission. And so if we could make this form of giving very, very simple and easy, maybe like, there are many business owners out there who would also do it with us. <laughs> so eventually I sold my food company. At, at that time, it was in Australia and then moved to Singapore right here to start the B1J1 as a giving initiative. And it's been 14 years in making and we, we've worked with thousands of businesses. Um, and those businesses have created more than 250 million giving impact to date. So that's the kind of journey into what we do. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much there I want to I want to talk about. <laughs> I, I love all of that. But uh, I mean, I love your story about how you talked about the kind of like your your traveling story. I've got a very, mm. you know, a similar kind of inspiration that happened to me. But I, I, the first thing I want to talk about is just like the concept of B1 G1 mm. and how like ingrained it is into like my reality as far as like, you know, from my perspective, I've, you know, I've known what the concept is for a while. Right. And basically, are you telling me that you were really the first ones that kind of gave this concept uh, a name and, you know, mm -hmm. it mobilized other businesses to do that? Okay. So we started the B1G1 in 2007 and the idea of B1G1 as a company for my company came to me in 2006. And uh, we never knew what was happening, you know, in the world, like outside of what we were doing. Later on, many years later, we discovered that um, this well-known brand called Tom's, which I'm sure yes. you know, oh, yes. <laughs> Tom's, no, that's... Tom's started in 2006. That was when like my food company started the B1G1 concept, you know, just in 2006. So like, and interestingly, without knowing, we were starting around the same time, but then, um, uh, the difference between the other well-known one-for-one um, initiatives like Tom's or Wobby Parker, like uh, that yes. embed giving in what they do, the difference of B1J1 was that those other businesses initially started off giving their product away. So every pair of shoes, you know, you purchase, we give a pair. Or every pair of glasses we, you purchase, we give a pair to somebody who needs it. And that model could work in some ways. Um, but then what we realized was that if we look at what nonprofits and the social impact organizations really needed to do the work that they do to transform the issues, then what they needed the most was actually funding. <laughs> <laughs> because there are all sorts of ways the funding is needed in order for them to do things. But the, receiving like a material, you know, like, like a fixed material in large quantities may not necessarily lead into the good that we want to see in the long run. So what we did instead of saying like, oh, we give our product away or we're going to help businesses to give away their own product <laughs> or service. What we did was to create this very simple model, but to, you know, simply find the ideal 
uh, social organizations, NGOs and charity organizations, and then help them uh, you know, find the project that they could continuously run to grow their impact, but also to break that impact down into micro tiny units, such as, you know, uh, if like bringing access to clean water is very critical in creating the foundation of health, uh, then instead of saying to people, okay, please donate money to this charity, and then we will build a well, and it's cost like five thousand or ten thousand dollars, we would break down that um, project into micro units, so it could become like uh, if uh, one cent can give access to clean water to someone for one day, and then we list all sort of projects. So today we have a more than four hundred projects uh, and uh, so when businesses want to do long-term giving and make a giving part of what they do they can actually embed in day-to-day -day business activity so for example every you know interview or a meeting that I have I choose to plant a tree <laughs> and so and it's only you know cost me like a few dollars but what happened is because I do it habitually so the more meeting and the more you know useful conversations I have with people naturally result in great impact right? like so we want to mobilize businesses to do the things in this way and in that way that we do what we do and not just us giving as a business, but mobilizing all the businesses to do it in their own way, I think would be one g one was the first to, to, to do so. And I don't know like if there are others doing exactly the same thing, but that's like our sweet spot. <laughs> yeah, okay. That makes, I, it, make, it puts it in a context more, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because you use the two examples that I was going to, you know, was going to use that, that being Tom's. Tom's was, was the first time I was exposed to the concept of B1G1. And this was when I was in, you know, grade school, um, but knew, mm -hmm. you know, could understand the concept. And, you know, all of my friends were wearing Toms and like, oh, did you know, they also like give away these shoes. And um, so it's just, it's just helpful to kind of put B1G1 in context. Um, but, you know, like Steven, I think there are a lot of similarities to how we talk about our goals with social enterprise guys and more broadly with uh, Good Business Better as being like an enabler for other individuals, organizations to, you know, kind of contribute to the purpose driven, uh, I guess, movement. Mm -hmm. um, so very interesting. Yeah, thank you. I mean, you, you, what you're what you're talking about aligns perfectly with our mission and, and just you know, we, we use this motto, good business, better. And the, the point behind that is, you know, a lot of people are doing good business there. A lot of people have this, uh, these social goals associated with their business. We won't, but there are some ways of supporting charities or giving back that are more impactful than others. And so we want to help businesses find those. Mm -hmm. And this aligns with the, the concept of effective altruism, but yeah, I, re I really like that you, you know, you, you identified, you know, it's not just giving back products, but where can we have the most impact and how do we, you know, align, how do we connect businesses mm -hmm. with those and with those nonprofits and align their goals. And, uh, there, there was this, in, in that video that I was talking about earlier, there's this, this, um, wonderful uh, analogy where, where, or where you talk about the power exists it, it's in the business and the for-profit sector. It's just really a challenge of connecting them with the right nonprofits. And that's where B1G1 comes in. Um, so whenever a business, uh, say they sell a product or they sell a service mm -hmm. and they donate a certain portion to, uh, towards a charity, how, now 100% of that goes to the charity am i right mm, yes now how do you how do you make that work um yeah so so that's right 100 percent goes and we also top up the credit card charges and things like that because you know if the credit card company took a small percentage of the one cent to give water then the water cannot go <laughs> so uh, we do that so every funds are coming in like every dollar coming in we actually remit out to the uh, charity organization and people ask us so how do you do it and so when B1J1 first started and because B1J1 initiative is a social enterprise you know we don't call ourselves a charity even though we have a charity 
uh, entity under this umbrella organization. So we have a uh, two parts. One is a social enterprise, which runs the membership initiative for businesses. And another part is the charity um, organizations registered in US, which facilitate all of the donations. Right? Like So then how the initiative overall works is that all the businesses who join B1J1 will contribute a little bit toward this thing called the movement funds. And the, the movement fund is basically a membership. And this fund helps us to develop all of the tools, the resources um, uh, to, to, you know, we can, so that we can allow businesses to give with ease. And then also we are you know, continuously uh, inspiring more businesses to join us. So this movement fund allows us to do all of the things that we need to do there. Then at the same time, when businesses are giving through the platform, then 100% will go. And we will actually make sure that all of the work around that is also covered from that. So um, that's the kind of like a model. And then, you know, interestingly, because I came from an entrepreneur background. So when I started, or when we started this initiative, you know, we could never think that we are setting out to start a charity at that time. You know, we could only think like a business owner and then thinking about how to add value, how to provide the value so that what we are doing as a uh, initiative uh, is valuable and we can be paid for, but then, when we are doing the work for social impact, we need to make sure that it's very, very transparent and effective. So that's why like we came up with this model and it's been unchanged for the last 14 years. And luckily we are still here today. <laughs> luckily, yeah, no, that's awesome. So is this, this contribution to the mm. mission fund, is mm. it a flat rate? Is it a portion of the overall business? Mm. I'm also curious, like what, as you bring in companies to this network, like, are they a specific size of company? Okay. Are they a specific industry? Are mm. they like products? Mm. Are they, you know, can they be mm. services? You know, mm. that's a, those mm. are questions that are. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, oh, very cool question. And I hope you're taking you know, notes. We- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great question. And we had a you know certain trend over the last 14 years. So when we first started to be one to one, you know, no business was looking out for this kind of proposition or opportunity because you know everybody was thinking about how to make more money, like how to maximize the profit. So if we said, okay, here's a great way for you to give away your hard-earned dollar to something else <laughs> that may not benefit your business, then nobody was looking out for that opportunity. So what we had to do to really like get into the heart and mind of business people, we had to travel around the world and speak at events. You know, so we kind of sneakily appeared on many different business events and out of blue suddenly introduced the idea and said, imagine, you know, what if your business could make a difference every day through what you are doing. And then uh, when we were, you know, able to be face to face with people, uh, actually many people, you know, without having a conventional business proposition, they said, yes, I'm in. I want to be part of this, you know, and, and the vision. So... Um, so that was the kind of model. So initially, the type of businesses that joined us were all like businesses, um, small to medium sized businesses, particularly small business owners, you know, being at the event. And then maybe the, those events attracted more B2B business people like consultants or coaches or accountants or, you know, because those are the type of event we were appearing more. Uh, so there was a tendency. But um, as we have developed, it's also developed because B1J1 is an open initiative for businesses of all sizes and types. So we don't discriminate any business. As long as business has the intention to make a difference, then we, we would love to work with them. And so the membership model too, we accommodate all the different business types today. So if a tiny business or a startup or you know, young people starting a business want to join us, then uh, the you know, business program start with just a dollar a day. And we subsidize the membership for a young entrepreneur, like you know, entrepreneurs under the age of 18 then uh, we can subsidize the membership even more. And so we have a model to make it easy for every business to do this. But at the same time, larger businesses, we ask them to contribute more to the movement fund because they can. (laughs) And they should be supporting more small businesses to be able to do something like this. So together, you know, we are all like stakeholders rather than 
you know, we customers eh, <laughs> of the B one zero one movement, but they are the part of you know partners of this movement to inspire every business in the world to think about the good that they could be doing every day. Yep. That okay. That makes a lot of sense. It's extremely helpful. <laughs> like, where do I sign up? How do I get involved? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can just go to b 101com and then it's very easy. Like, it it probably explains everything, but you know, it's very easy to get started. So you can sign up and create the b 101 account, and you know, you can create many different giving stories. You know, and then once you get started, we give businesses um, uh, cool things like a widget, which counts your impact. Packs. And then you can just embed this widget on your website, just like you embed a YouTube video and it's live count and it shows you the breakdown of impacts or which sustainable development goals you are making impacts or so many, we have many of those to make it really meaningful and tangible for businesses to continue to give. Um, and then at the same time, let's say some of the people listening to this, uh, you know, episode, uh, running a nonprofit organization or no great charity organizations that are making great impact and very effectively doing so, then you could look at the b1g1.org site. So we have a two website, b1g1.com is for businesses and b1g1.org for, uh, for nonprofits to see like whether they can qualify our criteria because it has a very, uh, quite a strict, strict criteria. But if you can meet that criteria, it's free for you know, non-profit to join and 100% of fund goes to them. <laughs> so uh, we would love uh, anybody to look at either of those. And if you are just an you know, individual without business or uh, charity, then you know, it could be just that you spread the word and to let somebody else know that there is this way of making a difference. Then that could also make a huge impact too. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, one of the things that you do so well is you is you make it easy, and that's one of the key things in in getting people to to do you know what's what's right. And and you know, Michael, Michael, you know this being a a tech entrepreneur is is uh, the the key to getting people to use a product or service. It's it's making it easy for them to navigate and. And work well with it's another difference between like uh, Tom's kind of model and then the B one G one model is that it may not even related be related to sales activities at all. You know what what the businesses are doing. So as I said, like every meeting I have, I would plant a tree. Uh, you know, uh, other companies may be doing uh, something really cool, like every birthday that they celebrate in their team, they would create an impact, or every email they sent out, they would actually do an impact. Or, so things that don't relate to sales activities or such, but it's meaningful for them to celebrate in their business can turn into a moment of kind of unity and uh, impact. And then that like kind of gives people a different context of day-to-day -day work um, because, you know, we are coming together to do something more than what they, that directly benefits them, but something that they can uh, celebrate together and then do good together. So I think there is this all sort of benefit in embedding giving in business. And when we do so, this embedding becomes like a, a little honeybee to pollinating the world, you know, around the world, the flowers around the world, because that's how the little thing makes a huge difference. If we forget to pollinate the flowers, then we cannot have a sustainability. And that's what happened in the business world that we focus so much on profit and extracting the honey, but without pollinating. And so if we remember to bring back what was naturally part of business activities, it, which is to cultivate the soil in the world, to pollinate the flowers in the world so that we will have a long-term success, then this is the way to do it, like in whatever way. So I don't think every business should join b one one even though we would love to, them to. But I think every business can think about how they will use their business to do good and to give back and not to just think about their profit. And that is critical to do. So, yeah, it's the, it's the time that, you know, interesting time in the world where we face so many uh, critical issues. But then if we just remember this simple give back and, you know, working together, um, then we really can make huge impact.
Yeah, you're seriously such a like a role model. Um, like what as you're talking about this, it, it really does resonate. Uh, when Stephen and I have kind of like joined forces over the last, you know, uh, six months to bring social enterprise guys and our movement uh, to the forefront. And uh, something that you've hit on in the beginning, like so our tenants are inspire, connect and grow. Right. We want to mm-hmm. inspire social entrepreneurships, mm-hmm. social impact, really connect them amongst a community of like minded individuals and then help each you know each stakeholder kind of maximize their contribution like grow their social impact right and i and i think you know how you talk about what b1g1 does it's very like very similar and i think we can learn a lot from what you're doing right and for us it's always and the reason we made the podcast because we believe it comes for first and foremost from this place of like education where we need to like educate people on these alternative ways of business or like these alternative ways of um, driving impact. Um, so from the education, then you have this massive, you know, um, I like that you continuously use the honey, the, the honeybee example, even in the videos that I watched before. And now like you really, really highlight that because it's essentially what you're doing. You're mobilizing you know, a, a hive of individuals, a swarm of mm-hmm. individuals to mm-hmm. kind of like act on your behalf mm-hmm. or act on the behalf of more generally just society. Right. Cause then in mobilizing each individual, you're, you're contributing at a larger scale. Right. Um, anyway, it's just, there's a lot of like points that like resonate with me. And I know Steven, you could probably, um, attest to the similarities between our like missions and how we describe it, but mm-hmm. Yeah, well, certainly. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the thing that I always that I believe firmly is we don't need to just do it. I'm not trying to sell people on some feel good thing, just, not just because it makes them feel good. I'm, I'm trying to to highlight the social enterprise movement and with it's what Michael and I are doing. We're trying to point out that it's the logical next step in business. You know, in, in order for business to survive, it has to become sustainable. We have to start thinking about social goals and not just shareholder uh, profit in order for, uh, and, and there, there's a selfish reason for that. There's a, there's a selfish motives behind being selfless. Um, but, but, you know, you, you touch on that and a lot of people avoid talking like that or, you know, uh, you did it so well. Uh, but, <laughs> no, but um, it's very very simple right like i mean all of us want to be happy and then that definition of happiness can vary like it's not like everybody wants to be just joyous all the time some people like challenge you know accomplishing some great goals and every person wants a different happiness but we all want to have that sense of fulfillment nobody uh, lives their life thinking i want to be totally miserable and have uh, all this pain and you know <laughs> suffering all my life like that nobody chooses that so if we are all coming from wanting to have this fulfillment then it's together finding the way to make that possible for you know for ourselves that then for others so that that becomes actually like sustainable because happiness just for one is not sustainable um, so if we go to look at this very very simple truth then uh, we actually, you know, have the power to make all the uh, important things happen together in a way that fulfills us. So it's not just a great win-win, like we can be totally selfish (laughs) and then selfless at the same time. (laughs) You said every time that you have a meeting, I don't know if it's Mm. this kind of meeting Mm. or just meeting Mm. more broadly Mm. that you'll plant Mm. a tree. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So uh, one of the tree planting projects I I love is a mango tree project. So what happened is, well, I I, I plant all kinds of trees in B1G1 and each tree has a different meaning. But the mango tree one is um, kind of particularly interesting because when um, uh, there were so many people dying with um, HIV, and there were so many thousands of orphans in this community in Kenya. What happened was this organization identified that the way to support these orphans is not to build an orphanage, but is to make sure that local people can take on these orphaned children as their you know, children. 
So in order to do that, they had to equip them with financial uh, ability so that they can fund their you know, cost of education and the living for the children. So the families will see like, oh, we can do this. And then take in the neighbor's child or relative's child rather than sending them off to an orphanage. So these mango trees are one of those things that they do to equip the family. So when the family plant two, two of these specially grafted mango trees, these mango trees grow much faster and then it doesn't grow too tall, but they start to um, bearing fruits very fast and the fruits are big and juicy. So when they take those mangoes to the market, they can get more money for it. So then the two mango tree producing the fruit can cover the education cost of a child for the entire year, just two mango tree. And it's only cost like, I think $2 or so, like to plant, well, $1.50 to plant one mango tree. So if you how think about- <laughs> How long does it take for a mango tree to bear fruit? Uh, normally, like it would take, uh, you know, more than eight years or something, but this oh mango tree will be quicker. But the thing is, because there are people, you know, we, we've been doing this for 14 years. So there are many, many mango trees <laughs> that's already bearing fruits, right? So right. What, you are, what you can do today is to make sure that the, the children who uh, need the education support, like, you know, for four or five years time will have the ability. So, um, Tree planting is always longer term impact, but it's very, very important. And there are tree planting that you could do to protect rainforest, you know, or um, every project have a different story. So in B1J1, like we don't say to business, just, you know, just do one thing and stick with it forever, even though that's one way, one good way to do so. But then we, once the business is already doing, you know, core giving, then we also inspire them to think about other additional things that they could do. And because it then makes it like also fun and then the impact can spread to many different causes around the world as well. So, you know, coming together uh, with many other businesses, uh, every project can get help. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to go into your, your process a little bit. So mm. when charities or nonprofits, when they come to mm. B1G1, they, you guys actually go through a uh, kind of a rigorous process to ensure that mm. they are a high impact uh, charity. Ha tell me more about that. Mm. So the criteria itself is, you know, like uh, limit the type of organizations that we can work with because, you know, we are not looking out for a charity uh, who want to raise money for something in the future, but they're not doing it yet. Right, like we want to build a school, and we need two million dollars to build a school. Right, like then we cannot. We want to a model is not for them. Maybe they can go to like a Kickstarter type of fundraising for that. Um, so B one one model is to identify the organization that's working on a particular issue for a long period of time, and they have at least a minimum of, of three years of track record with that project activity. And they have the financials to actually, you know, um, get the uh, finance like a budgeting clearly. So we know like uh, what is the cost of doing certain activity, and then we will evaluate that and break it down. And then we will bas basically make sure like other factors, all the check boxes are checked. So we do this, and we interview them, and we also review their project each year. Um, and also we have a different criteria like a project, you know. Uh, size of project as well as like scalability and yeah so um so when we because we do this and not all the charities are used to the idea of like being very clear about the project specific funding and costing and then to break it break it down so that it becomes a meaningful amount like a you know impact and then a feasible amount for businesses to give so that's why like we are not necessarily successful in bringing in all the charities in the world. And that's not what we are trying to do either. But when good organizations, like organizations that operate in that mindset already, aligns with B1J1, and they become, then they become long-term partner with us. And uh, yeah, then we continue to gradually bring in more projects as the business community grow, because we don't want to have a too, many business, uh, too many businesses with less projects, but we don't want to have a too many projects with you know, fewer businesses, because then it's not worthwhile for the organizations to be part of this. So we're trying to strike the right balance continuously. 
Is there like a, a key example of a one that you do business with or? Um, yeah, so uh, for example, like I mean, there are so many examples, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah so it's hard to pick, but uh, maybe like a couple of interesting ones. Um, so in, uh, in America, we have a uh, you know, lovely swim school, um, uh, which has like um, three, three different you know, swimming uh, schools in Miami and they um, give for like every swimming lesson, but they are the one who started to do this birthday giving. So every time, you know, their team member celebrate a birthday, then they get to do create an impact and they are really focused on human development and leadership. So for them, like adding in that giving element matters a lot because when they attract people who resonate with the idea of giving, you know, to start up with, then they know that the, uh, the, the leadership of these people, you know, the, the future of the organization is uh, like, you know, more uh, uh, growth oriented and, you know, people will be always thinking about how to give more. So that's one. And another one is uh, interesting one is a pest control company. So if you think like a pest control, then you go like, you know, it's not like image wise, it's not the best type of company, right? <laughs> Um, but what they are doing is amazing because they are, why they started was um, because they wanted to give opportunities to um, army veterans and army veterans tend to have, uh, you know, uh, this post-traumatic like issue. And so they, many of them are not getting successfully like going back to workforce. So they decided to create a company so that there is opportunity for the veterans. But at the same time, they wanted to make sure that the children living in uncertain circumstances or in conflict zones will have a, a support. So they are giving goals naturally toward the children children in vulnerability and so um, there are so many and uh, it's hard to just to say this is the best type of you know giving or best business but it's the magic you know uh, of the differences that we have and the stories that those businesses bring in um, that really inspire us every day yeah i i think those are great examples and yeah and you definitely more than answered my question um i'm curious about i mean Stephen, did that answer everything that you were curious about I yeah it, well i i would say to for people to really go check out the website um because you guys really do well with breaking down how this works for every different industry and every different type of chair or many different types of charities and so you, you give examples, a lot of examples there on the website. So definitely check that out. I'm, I'm curious about the process for onboarding more on the social enterprise side, the, the businesses that you bring in. Um, I love, you know, the, I hadn't thought about the idea of the dashboards that you, you know, that you give to the businesses that join. Um, but let's like just play out an example. Like I go in, I create an account. I'm joining this network of B1G1 businesses. I get my dashboard. Like, is there like, am I, am I, is there like a cadence of connection? Are we as business owners coming together to discuss, or is it mostly asynchronous and that kind of we run our businesses in silos, but have this point of connection through B1G1 mm. or like? Mm. Um, so we, like when we were, you know, um, able to travel, <laughs> we were doing quite a lot of event activities. Um, and, uh, you know, we had annual conferences where people from around the world came together or we also did um, study tours uh, to take a small, you know, for this one, small group of business people and their families to visit certain projects um, um, and, you know, give them at least the kind of idea and, and uh, uh, real understanding of impact created on the ground. And then through those activities, many uh, of the businesses became friends with each other too. And uh, you know, these days, because we can't do physical events or <laughs> traveling too much, so now we have a more online interactions, but we are continuously seeking out for how to link businesses in meaningful ways, because the more they feel together, you know, the, the more they feel empowered because even, you know, one company is giving this much and that on its own seeming, seems to be not massive. But if they realize that as a movement and community together, we are creating collective impact and covering all of the important issue areas, 
because you may not be able to do all like you know look at the hundreds of projects and feel like oh i can't give to all of them and you know feel uh discouraged like you know that's possible but when you know that you don't need to do all <laughs> you choose what you can do and want to do then other businesses will be doing the other ones right like that's very empowering so i we are still continuously learning about you know how to do this like a connection part better and better in the meaningful way and the time is changing so our approach need to change continuously um, yeah, but that's an interesting question because the B1J1 initiative is definitely not just about the platform. Platform is just one element. And then also uh, referral in B1J1 works in an interesting way. So if you introduce another business to B1J1 and you use your own referral code or link, then we don't give you like financial incentive, but we will um, um, basically create an impact, but also to link you and this new company together in our system so that you will have your own impact account, but you will also have this account called the leveraged giving impact, which is the impacts created by others you inspired. And then you can see the amalgamated impact too. So we always think about like how to make it more meaningful and tap into the connections that we already have in the world that's the connections that businesses have and you know the customers of businesses and clients and you know all of us are already connected in this web of day-to-day -day business activities so we're gonna tap into that to do the you know create the maximum good together so that's the idea well we're um we're gonna kind of <laughs> close up here but we we could do a few more podcasts i'm sure out of this we, we could keep talking but uh but we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and close it down one thing i do want to talk about in the future mm. is mm. you know this is all talking about inspiring social enterprises to give mm. back but you also social enterprises are hard and they're difficult to run because they're you know you're kind of going in both directions you're going in a profit direction kind of and and also a stakeholder uh, benefit in a social mm -hmm. impact direction. So, and that's really difficult. So, you know, we, we'd love to have you back on sometime to talk about yeah, yeah. the challenges um, of starting <laughs> yes, such an organization. Yes, definitely. And um, I feel that you probably like really resonated with the idea and you guys uh, just feel like the, you know, right people um, uh, uh, that we would love to work with as well. So if you end up being part of B1J1 community, then I will come back anytime you want. And also we can introduce you to perhaps like different uh, organizations, NGOs, or you know, businesses that want to be interviewed by you guys too, so. <laughs> hey, we've got that recorded. So you're, you're yeah. to see that. I'm gonna be a part of the B1J1 network in about an hour. Um, <laughs> one thing that I, that I think is really cool. And then we, we can close up, but, um, you know, you, you talk a lot about like this, the, the power of small and the power of like these like mm. micro interactions. And yes. I think like, that's also like resonated with me on like a personal level too. Like I, so my background is in journalism and I, and I learned about how you use like, you know, media to impact, you know, like culture and, you know, larger like societies, right. Larger mm. groups of people. Um, and kind of my, what I found most interesting and we, I took a, a, a dive into like social media and how it's like been an extension of, you know, other one directional media. And then like personally with my own business kind of tried to move beyond that to where, you know, like my business is an assistant that is meant to enable individual social interactions, like, mm -hmm. and really drive them to become experiences where, you know, social, other social platforms kind of keep you locked into this like media exchange. Anyway, with our kind of like our social impact is, is very much around that whole power of like small, right? Mm -hmm. Like we believe that changing the world is not about like changing these like big masses of people, but changing each day our individual interactions and enabling more of these like uh, small group experiences that in my view, and it's also like in a view of my parents have instilled into me, you know, it's just like focus on each of those little interactions and kind of from that emerges. Uh, I don't want to use the word utopia. Like I know we're, like that's a little bit too mm -hmm. um, fluff, fluffy, but you know what I'm kind of like talking about? Yeah. It's that kind of like intention of going mm -hmm. in that direction, you know? 
Um, so I could talk to you about that. Um, but I think you put it into words better than I've seen anybody else put it into words. Oh, you know? wow. Thank so, you. Mm, yeah. But the, I, I think it's very encouraging to have this conversation in today's, you know, changing times. And I think uh, there are, I hear from many people who are um, going through some challenges right now because they feel like oh, maybe the world is becoming too divided. You know, maybe like we are too slow to make a positive change. And so th this is right in front of us, us and around us today. But I think this is, this can be really the time of, you know, change where we really realize how we cannot do this alone. We cannot do it in one-sided way. We need to come together. We need to respect the differences and listen to each other and to know that the real prosperity cannot happen um, if just one of us succeed or one side of the world succeed. So this is really the time uh, to have this dialogue. And I really am grateful for people like you who are already tuned to that and you know, um, uh, let people like us come to, to have this dialogue with you. So yeah, thank you for you know, the care you have and the, the business that you are working on to you know, make the impact, help others make the impact. I'm just so grateful for uh, seeing you know, people like you in the world. So we have a hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, we have a lot to learn and then we hope to learn from, you know, smart, dedicated, inspiring people like yourself who have been like kind of like paving the way and like, you know, leading the movement. And, you know, we are ready to like contribute and to like, I don't know, further enable that. So um, I don't know, Stephen, <laughs> if you have any Sammy, <laughs> Tell us how we can find out how mm. tell the listeners how we can find out more about you and mm. more about b1 g1 and get okay. involved um yeah so i said earlier that uh, for business initiative you can go to b1g1.com and then for the um, charity initiative the giving side then b1g1.org and if you forget this short URL, then you can type buy one, give one, and we will probably come up to. Um, if you want to find me, then you can find me uh, on LinkedIn, probably is the best place, uh, because I regularly post um, certain contents there. So I would love to connect with you <laughs> over there. We'll link to all that below. All right. all right. Well, thank you so much for being on this episode. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a great joy to be talking with you guys. <laughs> we, we hope to have you back. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>